Greetings, I hope you've had a good week so far. I am taping this before the election results in the US and we'll be uploading it on Wednesday morning. So I don't know what your week is going to be like then. Today I will be talking about something else though and that's an update on the COVID-19 situation, how what I'm seeing at the moment and share that with you, how it affects hiring and recruiting and the work environment. I had a similar commentary a few months ago and I thought it would be a good idea to give a bit of a, an update to the original one. Things have changed. When I taped the first commentary on hiring, recruiting, job searching during COVID-19, there was a lot more uncertainty. There were a lot more people laid off looking for work. The uncertainty is still there and I'm sure you share that with me. It is every day we're seeing new numbers and we're wondering are we going to have further restrictions soon? Are we going to be able to keep this under control? What will be the impact on businesses, on, on organizations, nonprofit organizations, on our fundraising? So the uncertainty is still there, but there is a little bit less of anxiety. What we're seeing is an increased confidence in hiring again, and also in resuming searches that were paused in the beginning of the pandemic. So jobs are out there and that is good news for our for our industry, for our sector. We are also seeing that people are looking that are not out of work right now. Of course, there are still a number of people unemployed and I'll talk about that in a, in a second. But we are also seeing people who are in, that have survived the, the COVID uh, layoffs, but what they are looking for is opportunities with organizations that they feel have shown more stability during the pandemic. And, you know, they might have seen that their organization has done a lot of restructuring or has had layoffs. And when an opportunity with an organization that has been strong or perceived as stronger or more, uh, you know, more uh, stable, that candidates are more willing to, to look at opportunities that are, that are vacant with these kind of organizations. So it's a bit of a reevaluating of your current situation and should I now be looking at an organization that has proven to be a little stronger during difficult times. Now, candidates who are looking for jobs, what we have seen is that those candidates who have worked in events historically, they are reinventing themselves a little bit and focusing on other pieces in their resume that are transferable to other areas within the nonprofit sector that are still being recruited for. There are not very many events positions or traditional events positions out there right now. Of course, we are also seeing organizations adapting to the situation and changing their events to virtual events or events that can still be held with, uh, you know, with, with, with proper uh, safety guidelines. But we are also seeing candidates who are saying, well, I've been in events for over 10 years and I have a strong, I have a strong background here, but I also have all these pieces, all these areas of expertise that I could use in a position that is not focused on events only. I have strong, strong project management skills, strong organizational skills, strong external relations skills. Maybe I'm going to apply for a different role and be a strong candidate for that. In, that, in those cases, it's important to really 
tailor your resume towards that new job, that new type of job, the, the a role that you might not have held the title of, but you can very well do. And then you just need to convince in a cover letter, in the resume, that you are well qualified for that position. But we are seeing people re-evaluating, well, maybe I should be thinking of other areas if my traditional area in fundraising is just not as um, you know thought after right now the interview process the interview approach has changed of course because of the virtual interview but the virtual interview brings certain side effects so for example it it, I feel that it's become quicker. You, uh, when we present our candidates to our clients and they review applications and then select candidates and schedule interviews, it could happen that they, they uh, review uh, applications on the Monday and then schedule uh, a Zoom call that same week, maybe a few days later. That was not quite the case uh, a year ago or even half a year ago. So that is something to think of, think of when, when applying. It, and, and I think candidates actually prefer a, a more rapid uh, interview uh, process than waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks before something is scheduled because this, this uh, person on the selection committee is uh, not in town on that date and this one cannot uh, be in attendance. But, they could all be on a Zoom call possibly. So it's a lot easier to schedule people's availability now. I talked about the importance of being able to adapt before. Also, the importance of being resilient, that is crucial in, in these times. And I'm always amazed when I see these organizations, how they have adapted to the situation, their fundraising, their work environments to make sure people are safe. And we, you know, we are moving on, we are moving forward. And that is really important. We also have to remember that not everyone is moving forward, maybe at the same pace that, that we are. And I had an interesting, it was fascinating and, and um, kind of moving as well. Uh, I had an experience on the weekend. I went shopping to a, to a butcher of all places. And I, um, I, the, the butcher only accepts two customers in the store at one given time. And I was lucky to still sneak in and a person behind me came in and the owner of, of the shop said to that, uh, that individual, excuse me, sir, but only two customers at a time. I have to ask you to wait outside. And the customer did not enjoy that and threw uh, their basket on the floor and stormed out. Then when the other customer left and I told the, the person waiting outside that that they can come back inside. The shop uh, owner told the customer, you know, I there are the regulations. I have to I have to follow these regulations, and I'm asking you to to do so too, and uh, and be polite and respectful. And then that, of course, opened a little bit um, of the floodgates, and the person was. <laughs> You could, you could just tell how, how you know, how agitated they were and irritated by the whole thing. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just blurted out and they said, uh, you have no idea how many places I have had to wait at today. I'm just wasting my entire morning. And he's, you know, he's really frustrated. And I stood next to him and, and, and I just looked over and, I, I very calmly and, and, and politely looked at him and said, I understand, but it's not her fault. It's not her fault. And it was amazing to see how 
there and I, I don't know why I said exactly that and it, it, I just said it. I didn't really think much, I just said it. Um, and his behavior changed. All of a sudden when he was served, he was friendly, he was nice. And then just uh, before I finished up my purchases, he said, you know what, to everybody, um, you know what, I have to apologize for my behavior earlier. I'm just frustrated, I'm just fatigued, I'm tired. And you know, we all had a moment of acknowledging Yes, it is, it is, of course. You know, we all want it to be like it used to be. And I think, and then, you know, and then he wished us all a wonderful weekend and we all parted on good terms. And I think, you know, that gave me, I, I was um, replaying that event in my head on my way home in the car. I think it's important to, to acknowledge that people are, you know, it doesn't matter what opinion they have on the pandemic and where they stand. I think it is fair to say that that people are fatigued with and and, uh, and are looking back at you know how it used to be. Yes, we're moving forward and we are doing our best, but I think it's fair that that people have their their down times, uh, and we have to acknowledge that even if we are saying, you know what, I don't I don't feel any different. I never lost my job. I I'm doing fine. Um, I didn't get sick. No one in my my family got sick. Um, no one no one died that I know. Um, but people there there are people who have had those uh, experiences. Uh, where they were affected. In, in my family, we had several cases, and I, I know also know of of, uh, of of cases that were fatal. Um, just acknowledging that people's uh, you know uh, feelings about about the situation, and I think that um, that is something that is that is uh, different now than it used to be. So that, I guess why I wanted to mention this is that. This is a situation that is unprecedented. We haven't really been in, in such times before. And we need to be prepared for people not dealing well with it. At the workplace, customers, uh, donors, whoever we are dealing with. And acknowledging that and dealing with it in a, in a positive way, hopefully it's not always possible. But it is something to, to realize is happening around us right now. Thank you so much. I hope you continue to stay well during this pandemic. And I wish you a wonderful weekend. Stay healthy.